If you haven't been watching the videos on the uh, Ada's type system in order, you, you need to because this is going to make absolutely no sense if you haven't seen the second part yet. And the second part really assumes that you've seen the first part. But today, we're going to be discussing uh, tagged records. What a tagged record is, what it's used for, that kind of stuff. Now, quick rehash. Not enough if you haven't seen this, though. Uh, we have a basic vehicle type, but it's not super descriptive. You know, a few properties, but it, it doesn't really go, do a good job of representing things better. And we can make it through a little bit of a, a object hierarchy, which is uh, ultimately what tagged records are used for. For. Now, one little thing to note is I did bring my text library in here just so that I, at least for the uh, numbers when we print numbers out, I don't have to uh, call image on them anymore. So, I'm going to get rid of limited for this. Y you can combine them. Uh, you can have a tagged limited record, but I'm just going to remove it for now. Make this tagged. Uh, this will have to go... Um, oh yeah, this is a good point. Uh, this should actually be abstract. Uh, is I believe it's abstract tagged record. And then we can't declare any of these. Uh, let's remove these as well. And uh, just make sure that's the right order. Um, statement expect. All right. No. There it is. Okay. So then, from this, we can define new types like a car, not a cat, is a vehicle. It is no vehicle. And then, if you remember from last time, there's two little choices we can do for this. If we want to extend this further, we can do with record and then put in anything else. But if there's nothing else to extend this with, it's just null record. But there's even there's an even better uh, thing that I would do here. Instead of going straight to a car, instead do type land vehicle abstract. Uh, what is it? Abstract new vehicle with null record. <clears throat> and you'll see in a bit why I'm doing this. We'll just check and make sure that I've got my order of words right, but because some of these are a little bit tricky. We do. Okay. And there's that. Oh, yes. Now that we've separated these out, we can Yeah, I can move those now. And if we do that, now we won't have an issue with a water vehicle like a boat having tires. We can also extend this propellers, natural, and default this to one. no issues. Type boat is no water vehicle. There's an important type of distinction each of these two vehicles can do. For example, a land vehicle can be driven
And one thing you want to ask yourself when you're doing these is this procedure it, it, or this function. E either way, it would be a method in this in this case. Um, is this something that can reasonably operate on the class wide, or should each um, should each child of it implement its own drive method? In this case, we're going to ignore the concept of treads and also legged vehicles and just say that, well, they've all got tires. They're all going to drive the same way. And so you call it on a class line. This takes advantage of polymorphism so that if we have, say, both a car and a truck, uh, or actually, if we extend land vehicle to both be a car and a truck type so that both of them exist, uh, either one of them would be able to use the drive method without needing to create another one because the only things it's concerned with are already defined in land vehicle. If we were to change it to like tired land vehicle versus treaded land vehicle, then we wouldn't be able to do this because they have different modes of being driven. Actually, uh, and I'm going to still show that off, but I'm not going to actually use that here because we're just going to do a simple function call just to, uh, just to sort of simulate this stuff. Excuse my ignorance, but I believe for boats and stuff, it's still called piloting. And, all right, these don't need to just be specs. We can just do the single line. Um, Okay. Well, uh, I'm not going to need to... I, I still have my text. Yeah, okay. So we can just do this.
Oh. still complaining about. Line 17. Okay, those are just warning. That's fine. Uh, expect to attack motor vehicle, contact car. Five and thirty six. Why would? But it's, but it's. I've never seen this problem before. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Because we declared these abstract, and that, let's not do. Oh, totally the wrong thing. Contact car. Oh, because I, I define those as new types. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, I... <clears throat> I paused this video, uh, recording this video, waited a few days, and then just picked it back up again, so I'm sort of... Like, what? Trying to remember what I did and where I was going with this. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of these and then just call a uh, car. It's a land vehicle. With uh, weight, thousand. Color can be. Right, we'll have a gray car. Boat. Water. Cool. I'll have a green boat, and then the others are fine. And I used a wrong symbol on line 30. Yes, I did. Did I not define one of those for Boolean? I suppose that's possible. I could have sworn I did, though. Oh, Boolean image. There we go. There we go. So then... Obviously, the types of vehicles are not just limited to land and water vehicles. We could define an air vehicle, like a plane or a helicopter, but it, one of the more interesting things to try to show off is an amphibious vehicle, because it's both a land and a water vehicle. It would make sense that in many cases, you'd want to inherit from both of these. You can't. What it's really trying to say here is that because we already inherit from one tagged record, all of the rest of them need to be interfaces because it can't appropriately figure out how to inherit from two tagged records. 
And the reason for this should be pretty obvious. At least with our current example, these two could be merged without conflict until you get into the what would normally be methods that operate upon them. These have the same names. These would result with the same signature. Which one of these do you use? And so if we wanted to actually define an amphibious vehicle, we have to go back, <clears throat> define it as a new type of vehicle, with both tires. There are other types of amphibious vehicles, of course, but this, we'll just use this example. And propellers. Let's default that. But then this means that everything that would have been defined for land and water vehicle that are relevant need to be redefined for amphibious vehicle. That's against code reuse because you're duplicating code. Anything that's defined for vehicle will still work. But that's not going to be a whole lot given how abstract the base vehicle is. You know, we can do basic things like, hey, repaint this. But a drive method would not really make sense on a base vehicle because driving a boat, how, how, how would you do that? Similarly, piloting around a land vehicle as if it was in the sky doesn't make sense. Piloting a base vehicle, which would include land vehicles, doesn't make sense. And you wouldn't want something like that to apply to a land amphibious vehicle either. There's, this is what's known as the diamond problem, where you have one thing, let's call it D, that inherits from uh, B and C. In this case, our B and C are land vehicle and water vehicle, where both B and C inherit from vehicle, or from, from A, which in our case is vehicle. If you were to graph this out, you will see a little diamond shape from the inheritance. I have basically shown off everything about tagged records that I want to show off, I'll do another video that's not really meant about uh, how to, to declare and use the types, but uh, much more in depth on uh, tagged records and object-oriented programming, uh, how to actually tell if something's dispatching or not and what that means, and uh, how to use class-wide types versus uh, specific types and stuff like that in another video. But uh, this should be enough to... Uh, to really get you familiar with tagged records and how to declare them and use them. Uh, and also sets up for the next video because we're actually going to solve this diamond problem using something Ida has. So that's, that's really cool. Not many languages have any type of uh, facility to, to solve something like this without extensive code duplication. like to remind you uh, that these tagged records can be combined uh, with other things that I've shown off or will show off. You can have discriminants at any point within these tagged records. So <clears throat> like if we wanted to do the mode of the water vehicle based on like propellers or wheels or whatever or the mode of the land vehicle based on tires or um, treads you could implement that as a uh, as a variant record, which again we'll get into next time. Uh, but that sets up whether it's tires or uh, tread based. But you can also do that. At least in this example, it would be totally fine to do that through just a just a um, just another child type uh, inherit from land vehicle each time. Uh, but they are you can freely combine them. There's nothing that makes says uh, a tag can't have a discriminant. Hope this video helps. If you like what I do, please give me a thumbs up. If you find my videos in general helpful, please consider subscribing. Helps uh, me out quite a bit 
more than YouTube makes obvious. But also consider hitting that little little bell next to subscribe. Uh, it gives you notifications when I produce a new video, which is usually every day, every other day. Uh, have a good one.